Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. You have Lisa with me, my, our director of product education. I am Dr. Ryan, director of product development for LiveGood. Today, guys, is a Q&A session, but I want you to know something. So please stay tuned because there are some questions that I've already received that we have never had to answer before. And we want to do something. We want to do something where we get to these questions. We get through as many as possible. And uh, I hope you guys, I know there's going to be some things that you'll learn from this, this Zoom today. So stay tuned. Yes. So welcome to our uh, product training Zoom, where you learn how our amazing supplements can help you increase your health span. Um, before we get started, if you haven't already, make sure you like and um, subscribe to the channel. That way you can get access to all of our videos. You don't miss a new launch, yada, yada. But also comment. We love your comments. We love your feedback. Like to hear your takeaway um, from what you've learned. Um, so like Ryan said, um, today is a Q&A. So the last Monday of every month, we aim for a live Q&A. Um, because if you notice during our regular trainings, um, we don't answer questions that don't pertain to the topic that we're discussing that day. So if we're talking about protein, we're not going to answer questions about our new lead, right? That's so right. this is where you can yeah. kind of throw out the questions. Um, but again, these are product and health related questions. Uh, if it has to do more with the business, why not? Um, we'll direct those to support at livegood.com. Um, so going into it, I do have a few questions that um, I've been getting, and that's because we have recently launched our supplement lean. Um, so I guess the most, the biggest question, it says on there to take two before each meal, but some people are like, I only eat two meals a day. Maybe there's long-term fasting where you have one meal a day. What do you say to that? Dr. Ryan. Ah, thanks, Lisa. The the lean is based the date the the, uh, woo, the <laughs> dosing protocol is six a day. So you don't have to be doing it with a meal. Preferably, it's two capsules an hour, thirty minutes to one hour prior to each meal, six capsules per day. But you don't have to do it that way. Actually, it'd be just fine to take two on an empty stomach if you skip breakfast or just don't eat and then go to lunch and then you have dinner. So no problem there. And the whole point of that is. We we did a Zoom on lean, just on lean, but it was talking about how you can titrate the dosing. So how do you increase it? So a lot of times people might feel some abdominal cramping, some discomfort, and that's normal. That's like actually pretty much predictable or expected, but not everybody will feel it. But if you do, you can start lower and titrate up. And so you can start with one capsule three times a day or two capsules twice a day and sort of figure out what works best for you. But ultimately, yes, we want you dialed in at six capsules per day. Okay, awesome. While we're on the topic of lean, here's another one. Can they also take it if they are on like Ozempic or Trizepatide, one of those mm -hmm. GLP-1 Agonist. agonists? Yes. And, um, peptides. and let's not get scared, guys, of GLP-1s. I know a lot of people are taking them. That's totally fine. Um, there are some things that to consider, some consequences of taking them. Remember something, foods activate GLP-1, bacteria, all these different nutrients and things will activate GLP-1. It's a normal, that is an, that's a receptor, right? That is, that's what the body's looking for. It will activate that upon, you know, typically upon eating and some things that have happened so that it'll increase insulin secretion, therefore bringing down, uh, helping, helping your body get ready for a glucose load or for sugar load. Uh, it'll tell the brain, it'll signal to the brain, you know, satiety. Let's slow down the eating mechanism. Now we don't need to eat as much. It'll slow down the gut transit time so that the body can absorb more nutrients Typically, that's the way it's designed to work. So okay. let, don't be scared of it. So if you're on a GLP-1, certainly you can still use lean. There, there's no problem with that. There's not a contraindication or some reason why it would conflict. It does not. So it's perfectly safe. But one ingredient in particular in the lean, it's the New Zealand hops extract can and should and does interact with the GLP-1 receptor um, as an agonist. So it acts in a similar fashion to a lot of those prescription medications. But again, that little bit of duplication, call it, it doesn't negatively impact, uh, would not be a contraindication. Okay. Um, another question with lean. If somebody does not want to lose pounds per se, yep. okay, pounds. Sure. Okay. So that's the number on a scale. Um, should they still take lean? Like what if I could say this scenario, what if someone, um, maybe they have diabetes, but they're of weight? Should they still take lean? Yeah, of course. I think it's a more about like what's the body composition, the goal for body composition, okay. right? So we're ultimately looking for an improvement in body composition. All of us are. I want to improve my body composition, especially as I age. It's harder to keep on muscle. So do you. 
So I think it meets everybody where they are. Um, but yeah, ultimately, that's what the goal is. But remember a few things. When you take these GLP-1 agonists, and if you use lean and get the benefit of it, then you know that you probably now need to increase your nutrient, your supplementation. Okay. That's part of it as well. Because again, if you're not eating as much, which is po possible, our opinions on calorie deficit are a different conversation. We have talked about it. We're not believers in it long term. Uh, but to improve body composition, you need to focus on e eating the cleanest foods possible. Lisa, maybe you can comment on that. But also supplementation, right, too, because maybe you're not eating as much now. Maybe your body's not absorbing as much as well, because remember that I just said, the food's moving slower through the stomach. It's not necessarily, uh, you're, you're not optimizing per se uh, the digestion process. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, skipping to another one that um, I had someone ask. Um, it was about amino acids and our essential amino, sorry, taking our essential aminos while also taking the whey protein, because you'll see the nice amino acid profile on there. And this is a whole food source, right? So it's just like saying, oh, I had three eggs today, rich in amino acids, so I'm not going to take my essential aminos. No, uh, we need to supplement to make sure we have optimal levels. Okay. So again, this is like a whole food source. So this is like your steak. Your, your you know few eggs okay so yes you do need to supplement on top of that and then another one has to do with you know I always talk about or I always push protein 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 right we need to make sure we're eating enough protein um and I had someone asking a question about an, an ideal like their ideal body weight they wanted to lose 20 pounds um but that was just that was a small little goal there so when I plugged in their metrics so say you know the height and weight into the BMI calculator which you can easily find by just googling BMI calculator, um, it actually put them still in the overweight category. So just because you might think like a safe goal is like, okay, I don't want to, I'm not trying to win a marathon and lose, you know, 50 pounds, but I, I'm going to lose 20. Uh, if that still puts you in the overweight category, you're needing to, to eat um, the amount of protein, grams of protein per your ideal body weight, not maybe what your you want your body weight to be, but what is the right proper healthy body weight for you? So use that BMI calculator. Plug in your, this is just an easy example, plug in your, your height and play around with plugging in your weight to see what puts you in the normal range for BMI. That's an yeah. easy way to do it. And recognize too, BMI is imperfect. It is yes, not 100%. a perfect calculation. I, I don't know if you're referring to BMI or body or ideal body weight. There is a calculation for ideal body weight online as well, if that's what you're trying to, if you want to learn that as well. So perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right, let's go in. Let's go. Let's so go it's go. super red. So I use this for high blood pressure. Is there any more suggestions? Well, for cardiovascular disease, we've done a thing about blood pressure management as well, or you can find a Zoom on our YouTube channel. There's a lot of information there, but as far as the super reds, it's beneficial not only just for cardiovascular support, but really it's three areas. Uh, physical performance, because the dietary nitrates can in increase output and performance, and also sexual dysfunction. So the same way that Viagra and those other meds work. So super reds has got some really good benefits because of the dietary nitrate pathway. Yes, um, but Roberta, to get there, um, check out our YouTube channel and you'll find that we have um, Zooms on cardiovascular disease and high blood pressure, high cholesterol, so you can go into detail, further detail there. Yep. All right. So uh, our, what new products are coming out? What's the new launches that are happening? So we've talked about the children's, you know, I'm not trying to date this too much, but the children's gummy, multivitamin gummy is coming out, which you guys are going to be blown away. Seriously, nothing like it. You won't be able to even find something close to it. Mm -hmm. There is a hydration stick pack that we're rocking because we believe very much in cellular hydration. It's another reason why we love creatine. Um, also what else, what else PMS support or hormonal women's hormonal right. support beyond that, I'm working on a men's hormonal support product, uh, a sleep product though. You're going to hear it here first. There's a sleep product we're working on. Um, gut? Oh, sorry. That's before that gut, the gut, gut, gut. We are dialing the gut in right now. I'm finishing up the strands of, uh, the probiotics. I want to make sure that they're all perfect, that literally they're the best ones that we can get our hands on and they're active and clean and good and all that. Um, and then the lastly is the sleep product. Well, not lastly, they're not even close to that, but the sleep product is looking like a CBN. There's some other ingredients in there too, but if you're not familiar with CBN, you should check it out. Benefits of CBN for sleep. They're really, it, and we've done a few um, sample batches profile. Like we've just tried to run them. So they were, and they work really well. Yeah. All, all of our subjects like have reported it. back very positive benefits. So I'm very yeah. excited about our sleep, our, our products for sleep, uh, but sleep is a lot about lifestyle. So another thing on sleep, Please watch our YouTube. Yep, there's a Zoom there on yep, sleep. Yep, on sleep. It's a lot, guys, because there's a lot you can do to profoundly impact, positively impact your sleep. All right, cool. All right. Um, can you overdose on product? 
common question. If they're food-based ingredients, the general concept is no, it's just food-based ingredient. But there's some things that you need to keep in mind. Creatine is an interesting one. We do get it from food, but our body also makes it. There's two makes it and did you guys no I'm touching it in okay looks, looks normal no every time you look away it switches guys i'm Go sorry ahead. about this tech stuff okay looking okay right now you were saying the creatine creatine the body makes some and we get it from our food sources but the reserves go down as we age. And so we always recommend supplementing with creatine indefinitely. There's no need to cycle on, cycle off. Some things like that, I mean, it's like- Well, I mean, I think for example, like your our multivitamins are already high doses. Like you don't need to take more of those. I don't know what, what detail this question was going into. Vitamin D, you wanna make sure you're taking it based on your blood work because um, too much vitamin D can cause toxicity. But when it comes to, this kind of leads to another question that just made me think about I'm getting constantly um, is because the the lean has the, you know, the B12 in there. So it's hundred milligrams, you know, per two capsules. And then Microgram. My, sorry, micrograms. And we're talking about taking, you know, um, six per day. With vitamin B12, there is no upper limit um, because there, it, it, it's it's okay to go, I mean, too high. There, there, there is no known upper limit. There is no determined Well, limit. I think that there's been enough literature and studies to support where you would safely go up to. It's sure. Consumed. It's sure. water soluble, right? So, so the body would just it. excrete it, right? Uh, and like Lisa said, it won't deposit in the fat in the fatty tissue like other fat like soluble vitamin vitamins. D. A, D, E, and K are the four main ones, right? right? Those are the ones. So, um, but it's something like a methylene blue. No, we don't want you taking methylene blue every single day for the indefinitely for the rest of your life. There are exceptions to that, but really it's just because we're, what we're trying to do is, is trigger the body to sort of optimize the function of the mitochondria, which is a really technically technical and complex discussion around aging and mitochondrial health and cellular health. But uh, ultimately I think I would, I, I'm pretty clear on the ones that you would just do that with. And I think that's the only one really truthfully is, is that. Um, best products, lower cholesterol, make sure you check out same thing. We have a, a zoom, uh, I mean, a, a training on it on the YouTube channel, um, prostate health. There is lycopene added to the men's multivitamin. Lycopene has been getting a lot more actually attention on the prostate health. It's an interesting antioxidant, the way that it really deposits in the prostates. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, Lisa was talking about the amino acid profile and the way the amino acid and the complete protein and why you would take amino acids in addition to there's really, that's not, and lately, by the way, the literature on protein is not this 30 gram max per, per 30 gram per serving digestibility issue. Like we're seeing now that actually you can digest more than 30 grams of protein in a serving, but amino acids really, again, the more, the better up until a point that most people aren't going to reach anyway. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a fair way to right, put it or right. not. It seems a little loosey goosey. Lean? Can you take lean after, after you eat? Yes, you can take it after you eat for sure, for sure. Because it's not just. Um, I mean, it would be ben more beneficial earlier prior to prior to meals, but I would still take it though because you got you got some other things in there that are beneficial for metabolic health and weight management. Right. right. Okay. Um, Oh, I love this question by Anonymous about will we ever package some of these tubs in, 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 in bags? Guys, we are seriously pursuing a more economically, uh, not economically, environmentally friendly packaging. We recognize, I hate the fact, thankfully, these are not single servings, right? They're not single use plastics, right. thankfully, because we're a big believer in not using excess plastic. Trust me, we love the environment. We want to take care of it, do our part, be good stewards of it. So You'll see more bag usage because the bag usage is less material. Yes, you will see more bag usage, uh, but you'll also see more recyclable plastics in our game uh, as well. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, do. I, look, the maintenance dose for lean when you work your way up to it is six a day. That is. And actually, it's six capsules. I mean, it's a lot that we try to get in there. 180 capsules for 30-day supply. I mean... Could have put it in a scooper, but it would have been a terrible flavor profile and the whole thing. Um, Laura, what about getting your protein from foods versus protein from shakes? Mm. Um, I don't really know where your your question is leading with that, but we typically digest almost all, especially when it's with the whey protein, like the full 20 grams. But I was actually just listening to this interesting podcast about it. So say like you ate a steak um, that maybe has like 25 grams of protein, but after your body breaks everything down, what you're absorbing of that protein is not that 25 grams. I mean, they even went to say like ground, 
ground meat is easier for our, our body to absorb the protein from because it is already broken down. Our body doesn't have to do that extra work to break it down because it's already ground. So it's just interesting stuff. But they were saying, you know, like basically with the the way protein isolate, you absorb almost all of that 20 grams. So it, it, it has to be a balance of how to get the right amount of protein in. And where shakes really come in handy is first of all, convenience 110%. So if you're going and reaching for that, you know, um, fried something to get some food in, you know, it's really because you're, you know, going through the drive through convenience food of this, but it's also hard to get the amount of protein that your body needs without over consuming in calories. Right. So, I mean, that's why a hundred calories for 20 grams of protein, it's very, very easy to, to get it in there. And even if somebody is really struggling to get it in hundred calories, you drink two, you drink a shake in between each meal, there's an extra 40 grams of protein for only 200 calories. It's, it's very doable. Source of vitamin D. So the D3K2 is lamb's wool. It, um, the, in the children's multi that's coming out, there is a little bit of vitamin D in there, and that's the organic lichen that's plant-based. Um, so there's a little, yeah. All right. Now, numbers for liver function. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is like really taking the world by storm. Kids are starting, we're starting to see it in kids. This is crazy. A lot of it has to do with the foods we eat, the lifestyles we live. Diet. Yeah, diet's huge, guys. Huge. But uh, factor four. Uh, but of course, if you've got liver malfunction, liver disease, liver impairment, then make, make sure you consult with your provider as you're going through lab testing and to make sure that they're cool with factor four, but omega-3 fatty acids can be right. beneficial. And, and email me. I can send you more information yep. on um, fatty liver disease, Al alcoholic or not, both. All right. Um, sorry, guys. A lot of questions. We're already 15 minutes in. Lisa right. said earlier. Very specific um, like health condition questions, please email me. Lisa at libgood.com. I can help, I can help direct it, you know, to you a lot better and give you more information mm -hmm. than in a quick one. So like I said, we're trying to keep these quick because we know your time is extremely valuable. Um, but by the way, you can check out all this, yeah. all of our products too, on our um website. So click the link below in the description. So you'll see all of our products. If you click the learn more section, we also have some training videos there. So a lot of information is there um, for you. And as always, our YouTube channel, because we've been doing a training Zoom, our training, um, a live training every Monday for quite a while. Yeah. I'm going to knock out a couple more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They want to know how to alkaline, alkalize, alkalinity, alkalinity. How to make the body more alkaline. Well, alkaline. Thank you. <laughs> But look, it really starts in the morning. It has a lot to do with your morning because that's when your stomach is, your contents are gone. It's empty. Your stomach is empty. That's the time that you would focus on a remineralized water, hopefully reverse osmosis or filtered water, something that has a higher pH. But throughout the day, your body is producing acid in the stomach already. Homeostasis plays a huge role in our body system. So alkalinity matters, yes, but really overall, it matters about the level of nutrition, the foods we're eating, uh, and your body will really um, respond very, very rapidly uh, to, to doing that. But as far as focus on the alkalinity of certain foods, probably less of a concern for most people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, wor women's hormonal balance is not out yet. You will see that in the next two weeks. Super reds can be taken any time of day, any time of day. I like to use it as a pre-workout, but also we'll use it in the middle of the afternoon, afternoon pick me up. I love it. Late afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, no sugary beverages, get rid of the caffeinated or not ca caffeinated after 11 AM, but seriously, the carbonated stuff, Throughout the day, it's got to go. Uh, pump it up with something like the aminos or the reds, greens even. All right, cool. Farmers, uh, some question about glutathione. I love glutathione, but we're not able to find something that would actually absorb bio, have bioavailability orally. Scorbic acid. You'll see a new form of our scorbic acid. You will now see it as uh, organic acerol cherry, acerola cherry. That is the okay. new, yeah, it's done. The next round of batches, the children's gummy has it in there. Everything that has ascorbic will now become acerola cherry. So awesome news, guys. Awesome news. I'm not sure who asked that question, but yep, rocking good on that. 30 um, servings of the vanilla protein. It's a goal. It's coming next, actually. Yep. It's going to be in a bag. So we're rocking the 30 servings of vanilla into a bag. Protein prices have gone outrageously high, but we're keeping everything basically where it's at because that's what we're doing. We're not raising prices on you. It's crazy, though. These protein prices are going nuts. Um, what about the collagen peptides as far as protein? Lisa, you want to comment on, can you count it? Collagen peptides. Can you count collagen as protein? 
I mean, I, I you do, don't, but you always you say you shouldn't. <laughs> I say no. You don't count dietary. You don't count collagen towards your dietary protein goal because it has a unique amino acid sequence. It's different. It's not as much involved in muscle protein synthesis. Right. Collagen acts differently. There's a completely different amino acid sequence and different structure. So I do not count it. But if Lisa does, rock and roll. You don't need you don't need to consume that much collagen throughout the day anyway. And you should be getting it out of some food. But ten to thirty grams a day is probably more than enough. Right. Um, okay, cool. I, well, geez, we're not getting anywhere near the end, guys. I'm so sorry. We're not. Yeah, Lisa, protein bar. We got a protein bar in the works. Yeah, yes, yeah. You know it. Yeah, you know it. I mean, I I feel you on that one because there's only two that I eat, and it kind of gets boring. But um, it's hard to find one that's doesn't overdo the calories, but yet has enough to be a snack, has high enough protein, but low enough sugar and good fiber. Yeah, so we're working on it. There's a question about, are we going to come out with anything for fat burning, some teas and some things and different like muscle enhancers? My, my answer to that is that the, the, typically that class of stuff is, is promoted as, as muscle enhancing, fat blasting. They're typically thermogenics and they're just super high in things that race your heart, like mm -hmm. heart racing. So they increase your heart rate. Like caffeine is a thermogenic, right? Like, but some of these things are garbage and they're really, they can be really contaminated. So if you're buying one now, make sure you know your brand and have the testing there to support the use, but um, we don't really support thermogenics all that much for that kind of stuff, but we love creatine. We love everything way in the plant for muscle and everything like that. Um, protein bars are, yep, yep, Christine, what protein bars are coming. Yeah, we will be redoing packs, um, adding things to packs. As we bring in more products, we will be adjusting, but like Ryan was just saying, we have like five more like about to be out the door. So yeah. we don't want to make any adjustments right now because then we're constantly going to keep changing. We packs are, on you yeah, guys. We are, we're all over. Tight. And we're being honest straight up. Like, well, we'll replace the ascorbic acid, even though I don't mind ascorbic acid as much, but we're going to replace it. We're going to spend a little more and get some acerol cherry. It, I'll just be straight with, up with that. Can a 16 year old use whey protein? Of course. I use whey protein as a 14 or 15 year old. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. All right, cool. Yeah, sorry. I understand the CBD in Canada is a sticking point, guys. I think they don't like us importing it to, to them be, or exporting it into Canada because I think there's brands in Canada that they want it to stay supplied to their own residents. I, I don't really know. We've been getting really mixed results. Right. That, mixed answers. Um, also, you know, this is a common question, but I just had Joel say, thank you. The advice I gave him on um, taking our multivitamin. So, um, and I actually get this question often. And what it is, is you feel a flushing sensation after taking the multivitamin. And sometimes people don't know what they took because they might take like five things at the same time. But the niacin, um, it, you know, it, it dilates your blood vessels. So it, it can give you that flushing feeling. But really when that happens, guys, is if you're taking it on an empty stomach. So make sure you're taking it with food. And if you're like one of those people that has like a very light breakfast, take it up for lunch. But having a solid base of food in your in your gut will prevent that. Along those lines, this product right here calls Parasthesia. That's that itching sensation you get when you take it. It feels tingly in your face and I your skin. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Most people love it once they realize why they're experiencing it and they're feeling it. It is because of the beta alanine. Yep, Guys, true. check it out. It's actually pretty cool. If you hate it, I get it, but I love it. All right. What would someone uh, do to get better eye care? I understand this question. I'm losing my vision, you know, slowly. I'm 43. Uh, supplement with things like Lutein and zeaxanthine, which are in our multivitamins. Mm -hmm. Those two are in there. Um, they're helpful. Actor form ubiquinol, yes. Is it okay to consume super green, super red or protein? Has a problem with gout, gout. Yeah, I mean, look, gout is, we did it. Did we do a, a YouTube on gout? We have not yet. No, we should do gout. Yeah. We should do gout because I know a lot of people that suffer from gout. Uh, and also each person is, is unique in what kind of aggravates it. So you do have to listen to your body and see what maybe could, you know, flare things up for you. What's good to strengthen the kidneys? Guys, kidney disease is a huge problem. We're seeing a lot of kidney transplants because of, really because of diabetes. So it starts with insulin resistance, which starts typically with obesity and overweight. So guys, pay attention. It's a, the number one cause of kid, uh, kidney disease, um, renal malfunction and renal dysfunction, uh, eye disease, and... Um, and amputations because the micro the microvasculature the small blood vessels get inflamed and right. start to so it's again always going down. back and looking at what the root cause yep. is if something's going on with your kidneys yep. are you diabetic are yep. you obese what's going on there so you gotta definitely you gotta figure out what the root cause is of everything yep yep all right guys we're gonna wrap it up um thank you thank you thank you yeah. appreciate you staying tuned in with us uh we will always try to stay under 15 minutes it's at 25 because we just love 
Yes, yeah, you guys and interacting with all of you. Yes, for sure. And we're going to go ahead and put a link up to our uh, previous month's Q&A. So if you guys missed that, maybe your questions were answered there. Uh, but it's a great watch. You guys right. rock. Have a great day. Thanks, See you guys. next time. Bye. Bye-bye.